Hello, this is Dread from Apprentice's Corner. In today's video topic, I have stumbled upon what I believe to be one of the best new player-friendly builds I've ever seen in the entire game. It's even beaten Glacier for leveling, in my opinion, for speed. It is Channeled Blade Flurry. Now, the way this works is we're running just Flurry, the skill that you get for Rogue at like level 1 and you're turning it into a channel skill. Now normally channeled skills don't aren't affected by attack speed and stuff, but for instance, this version uh flurry is affected. So you will uh pretty much you'll turn it to channeled and you'll lose the delay between attacks with flurry, which will make you attack way faster for the beginning, of, you know, the campaign and will make it buttery smooth and very hard to mess up. Now, of course, later on, we uh, get rid of this because as it has anti-synergy with some of the mechanics, as I'll bring up later, but for leveling, channeling with it is absolutely amazing. And I channeled with it for 90% of the time I was playing the character as it just felt so pretty damn good. Uh, so channeled flurry works really well. I was forced to utilize uh, shadow cascade again for AOE, but at this point I believe that if you're trying to play a blade dancer and not taking advantage of your shadows, I believe it's kind of a bad build in my opinion as uh, shadows are such a strong mechanic for rogue or blade dancer specifically that it's like it it makes your build way better for pretty much no effort as it allows you to just get a large amount of AOE and I believe Shadow Cascade is something that's going to stay for Rogue for the entirety of its existence. So we might as well get used to utilizing it now as a good uh, leveling spec and good for uh, obviously for endgame here. Now I'm not utilizing it with Sync Cascade, I'm just using it with the normal usual Shift plus Shadow Cascade and then I use uh, Smoke Bomb for extra shadows and f pretty much it does what it needs to do. It just, you know, clears stuff so that, you know, my Flurry can clean up the rest. Uh, Flurry has a lot of cool interactions, like for instance there's a node in Flurry that gives you 20 flat HP each time you crit with it, and yes, that counts every single time that you hit an enemy, and every single time, you know, you hit, no matter what. And it's also increased per percentage of dexterity by 4%. So if you have like 50 dex, like I have here, it's increased by 200%. So it goes up from 20 to 60 flat, I believe, every single time we crit. Now, health on hit works just like pre-nerve uh, uh, pre nerf Volpack from Path of Exile. So pretty much it's instantly gained back. So pretty much we can face tank most things, especially in the monolith. But the biggest issue, like I said, is just Rogue has such a small HP pool. And you're also dual wielding, which causes you to take 12% increased damage. Even with glancing blow, armor, and all of these other nice things, uh, you still can't avoid getting one shot. So having instant HP recovery usually doesn't really matter. But for this build, it is a nice little treat. Uh, other things with the build... Um, that, that, that's pretty much it, I believe. So we're just going to move into the leveling here, shall we? All right. So you're going to be playing a rogue blade dancer. We're going to be utilizing flurry, channeled flurry, and also shift as well with the movement speed buff to kind of speed clear past uh, the campaign to get to monolith here. Uh, later on, you will unspec out of the channeled node but for leveling and up until monolith, you definitely want the channeled node as it pretty much speeds up your leveling process by a very large margin. Now for gearing and uh, you know priority of gearing, you want obviously movement speed on your rings and your boots. You want as much physical resistance as possible as if you did not know, all the enemies in the game deal physical damage so being having physical damage during the campaign definitely makes your life a lot easier and obviously if you see something with void res when you're in the void realm get some void resistance if you're in the imperial era get some necrotic resistance and when you're in the divine era get some elemental resistance but obviously fizz res it trumps all you don't need hp you just need a lot of fizz res and you will be completely fine for the entire 
campaign when it comes to that. Now, for offensive stats, we obviously want melee physical or melee flat. Any kind of melee flat works for the campaign as you won't be focusing on one kind of attribute until later on. So just as much flat damage as possible on both your weapons and as much attack speed as well if you can manage it as well. And for the skill tree, like I said, you know, you want flat damage, uh, attack speed, all of that, just to make sure that you have enough damage throughout the entire campaign as you're, you won't need a build crit. You just, all of your scaling comes from attack speed and flat damage for the entirety of the campaign. So as well, you'll be utilizing puncture as well, just a little bit in the early game while you wait to get your uh, flurry set up, your channeled flurry, and you'll also utilize it while flurry is out of mana because uh, it does cost five, uh, five mana per second to channel flurry. So sometimes you will run out of mana and sometimes you will have to wait. Now there are, there are nodes on the tree called sapping strikes that you can utilize if you want while leveling and respec out of later that will give you mana on hit with zero cost skills. So you can use puncture to give you mana back while you're trying to, uh, while you're trying to level to speed up the process of mana gain back so that you can channel flurry even more. Uh, other uh, skills that are not notable, uh, smoke mine, uh, well, smoke, yeah, smoke bomb. Smoke bomb is definitely one of the better leveling skills as it gives you blind, uh, gives enemies blind, which uh, makes it so it's harder to hit you and uh, half their critical strike chance. It also uh, gives you haste, which is very strong as having haste obviously is very strong. Uh, other kinds of things you'll need to know. Uh, so while you're channeling, you are standing still. So you do have to make sure to dodge out of big AOEs and stuff. Uh, but I found it very easy to kind of like dodge and dip around thanks to the fact that we are a rogue with shift. Uh, also, make sure to get the 150, I mean, get the 50% increased movement speed uh, for 1.5 seconds on shift as that makes it way faster than normal and of course always try to get the gambler's fallacy unique amulet as that will allow you to crit as well which will add a decent amount of damage to your arsenal while you are leveling and of course get rid of it later once you have enough crit uh and with that being said that's pretty much the leveling guide you can just do that and what i said and you should be fine for the entire leveling process up until the point where you're ready to move on to the later game trees. All right, let's move over to the skill tree, shall we? All right, here we are in game. We're gonna be talking about the skill tree, but first the name is Muda Muda because, uh, you know, obviously uh, we're kind of like, you know, the old, you know got, gotta get the memes in there, right? That's what the name was for. And of course, uh, we're running Flurry here. Flurry is very strong, as I found. It's a very strong uh, utility skill, and it's very strong for damage as well, if built properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take three nodes into Alicerity for attack speed, uh, two points into even more attack speed from Relentless, three points into more damage so that our Flurry does more damage three points into the base critical strike chance because we don't have any base crit on our weapon So we do have to get it from the tree itself. So this gives us all the base crit we need three points into crescendo for 75% more damage on the third strike which over is an overall DPS increase if you couldn't tell because of the way it works uh, And we use shockwave shockwave is very important while leveling uh, once you get the Boundless Blows, the channel flurry, you definitely want to kind of like go crazy for Shockwave because it adds this little AoE at the front and it pretty much turns it into Lacerate from PoE and it's really good for clearing and it feels really strong, especially while you're channeling. Especially while you're channeling. It makes it feels amazing. Then uh, one point into Incision Travel because we have plenty of Crit Strike Multiplier. We don't need that much. We have way too much. <laughs> and then of course... Uh, Four points into stolen endurance. Now, critical strikes restore health. The amount of health is gained is increased by dexterity. So we have about uh, 39 dexterity. Usually you'll have around 50 in end game ish if you have a finely tuned character. So if you have 50, 50 you'll be at like 200% increased health. So you'll be about 60 health. Now, to showcase this, we're gonna go to the monolith real quick. 
we're going to show you uh, why this is important as it's very noob friendly as it allows you to pretty much have vault packed in the game which is interesting as uh you know th their their stance on sustainabilities and stuff is very weird as i've found but it's completely fine so uh, we're gonna take some damage here just so i can show you guys how uh, ridiculous this is hopefully we can actually take some damage i might have to actually take off my helmet here so we actually take some damage because we have the health gained on a uh, block here uh, let's let's actually get a lot more mobs here there you go that's more like it as you can tell i'm taking damage one attack just let the skill you know talk for itself there just to show you how much uh sustain we have with that so pretty much we have infinite sustain uh obviously it won't save you versus one shots which is the biggest issue with the game right now in general in my opinion but uh so just not being uh being able to pretty much just deal with most things in the monolith just by kind of face tanking them is pretty nice thanks to this node obviously if you don't care about this kind of stuff you can go for damage uh more uh, adrenaline rush stuff like that but i found that the hp gain back is essential now we have shift here shift is going to be utilized with shadow cascade uh mainly to uh, provide us with some aoe clear here so pretty much what we're doing here uh Three points into Shadow Recuperation, so we gain HP. Uh, two points into Breathing Techniques. Since we are stacking into uh, Dexterity, this will give us about 80 HP. Uh, yeah, eight, about 80 HP, and this will give us about 45. So we gain like 120 HP uh, every single time we shift, every three seconds. It's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's pretty substantial. Four points into swift recovery so that our shift pretty much costs no mana. Three points into momentum as you get the movement speed as I'll show you why that's important later on. We have lasting presence which will leave behind a shadow. And then one point into dancing shadow so that we shadow cascade with the shadow which is very strong. And we have invulnerability while shifting so that we can actually shift into packs and not die. Uh, one point into dodge rating per dexterity here. We pretty much uh, are invincible for a second after... Um, using shift which is cool uh two points into acid flask on departure and then one point into acid flask on arrival and then one point into unseen strike the main reason why we have the acid flask here is because acid flask gives us haste on use so whenever we shift we get haste for about three uh two seconds which is very strong because uh we almost have permanent haste thanks to shift uh so it lets us move through monoliths and you know movement speed is king so just being able to move around and having that you know also less button suppress less button suppress is always good for a new player as well right so just having this off your bar which by the way it will shoot it off your bar right the reason why i have two smoke bombs here is just so that uh when i fat finger things you could probably just put acid flask here or something now uh, smoke bomb here we have one point in Shrouded in Darkness, as that will give us uh, Dust Shroud stacks, which will give us Dodge Chance and Glancing Blow. Very strong. Dodge Chance is very strong. And then we increase the frequency, so we get two per second. And of course, we go here uh, into Lingering Fumes for duration. One point travel into Smoke Blades, into four points into Umper Assault. The reason why we're trying to summon shadows is because whenever we dash, it makes all of our shadows utilize Shadow Cascade, and it gives us a lot of AoE thanks to that node. Uh, one point travel into Generosity, and then uh, one point travel into Enfeeblement, and then three points into Moonlight Bomb. So whenever we uh, throw down a Smoke Bomb, we have three stacks of Silver Shroud, which we dodge to the next hit, and we gain Ward whenever we do dodge that hit, and they last for a decent amount of time. Very strong as it saves us against bigger stuff as it helps us against one shots because if we auto dodge things right like it doesn't matter against single target i wish i could get the cooldown le uh, less than this but that would be pretty overpowered so i'm happy that it does have a 10 second cooldown otherwise spamming this would be insanely overpowered uh then we're gonna move to uh acid flask acid flask 
I'm going to be honest, you could literally do whatever the hell you want as long as you get the elixir of speed so that you get the haste ration <laughs> on shift. Like, everything else, like, I'll explain why I get it, but, like, it doesn't really matter, per se. So we get uh, two points travel into corrosive, four points into splash zone to give us more area so that when we do hit stuff with it, it's nice. Uh, tempered glass, it'll shred the opponent four times, which is pretty neato. Uh, three points into hindering mixture, which will slow stuff that are behind us while we're, you know, running away. And of course, one point travel into lightweight, and then two points into frailty, so that enemies deal less damage to us when they get hit by our acid flask. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really come up much. No. Is it really good for the haste? Yes, it is. And then we have Shadow Cascade here. Uh, Shadow Cascade is pretty strong. Uh, the main reason we're actually utilizing Shadow Cascade is not only for the increased area, but for this note here. Uh, Shadow Flourish. Since we're doing all physical, this is a very large amount of buff. So whenever we hit four enemies at least, and that's going to be pretty much all the time in Monolith and Arena, uh, if you at least hit four enemies with Shadow Cascade, you deal physical damage for a short duration, four seconds, which is one more second over shift, which is the thing we utilize to proc Shadow Cascade. So we pretty much have a permanent permanent 140 percent increased physical damage now if you feel like as though you have enough damage you can actually take these notes out and put it into more area and more damage in other places like damage per shadow here but of course uh, we don't have that many shadows up all the time so this note isn't as strong as it is with builds like sync strike uh one node into here into battle trance uh, one node into Crushing Darkness. Since we're not actually casting Shadow Cascade herself, the attack speed scaling does not matter whatsoever. Then we take one point to Flow State. Since we're uh, since we have two swords, this will give us 30% more damage for one point. We take two points into Rapid Expanse for the area. Uh, four points into leverage movement. The reason why this is very strong is because since we're playing a flurry build and flurry benefits a lot from attack speed, uh, this will actually gain 123% more damage from our attack speed as of right now. So building attack speed does not hinder our uh, shadow cascade while it's on our shift so it gives it a lot of damage now of course we move into two points into the base critical strike chance so that our shadow cascade can actually crit because we have no base uh crit on our weapons one point into carnage for critical strike multi doesn't really matter like i said we have a lot of critical strike multi uh, then two points is a shadow on kill. This allows you to cascade the shadows through packs and allows you to kill packs with pretty much just one shift through them. Very strong note here. This is probably going to get nerfed, by the way. Uh, and that's pretty much it for shadow cascade there. That's it for the skills. So let's talk about the passive tree so this is a really weird normally you wouldn't put this many points into the base road class but the issue is all all the points are so strong that of course you're going to use them right so you have eight points uh into swift assassin for attack speed because this gives us more damage for uh shadow cascade and gives us attack speed for our uh flurry it's very strong with flurry obviously eight points into steady hand we're stacking decks we want as much decks as possible one point into guile travel one point into evasion we're not always moving we're always standing still so this doesn't matter at all uh five points into agility now we gain increased damage per one percent increased movement speed per 1.5 percent so for instance right now we're gaining about 75 percent damage increased damage from our movement speed for five points and then it goes up as we uh, dash and that will affect our shadow cascade damage so it's just simply more damage do you need this node no could you live without it yes i'm sure you could i'm gonna be honest but i like the idea of it so why the hell not uh three points into dodge and parries for nine percent glancing blow chance so that we can get up a little bit more on our glancing blow chance uh eight points in critical precision this is one of the strongest nodes inside rogue right now as it gives you 80 percent crit chance per sword or dagger we have two so that gives us a lot of crit chance and of course eight points into thief card uh with the way our build works since we're stacking dust shrouds here as i'll show you since we're stacking dust shrouds uh, here, where glancing blow is going to be capped, so pretty much every single time we get hit, we gain 32 health back. Very strong when a lot of small things are peppering us. Uh, very strong in arena, but like I said, you're still going to get one shot anyway, so who the who the heck cares? Uh, then we have umbral. Uh, we have uh, 10 health gained on glancing blow on our helmet as well, which is very strong, which brings this up to 42 health. 
on glancing blow. Now, of course, we we'll move over to the Blade Dancer here. Uh, eight points into pursuit as the movement speed increases our damage as well as the increased melee damage. Uh, three points into Cloak of Shadows. You'll probably want to uh, finish this out once you get a few more levels. I've been playing this build a lot. Uh, one point travel into Shroud of Dusk. Obviously, later on, you could probably fill this out if you have enough points. Five points into Veil of Night, so we get a Dust Shroud on hit. So we pretty much scale our own dodge chance and block here. I mean, not block, but chance, glancing blow. As you can tell we get a lot of dodge from that. Uh, it also gives us 50% increased melee attack speed. Like I said, attack speed is very strong for this build. Uh, five points into the Suvan's pack. You probably put one extra point when you have the point. Uh, this build's pretty point starved. Uh, one point to flash steel. Ten points into weapon of choice. The reason why we're using two swords is so that we get 50% base glancing blow so we get benefits from thief guard it's the only way right now to make rogue blade dancer a little bit more tanky so we kind of and we also have enough plenty of critical strike multiplier so we don't need more critical strike multiplier for wielding a sword or a dagger and all the other stuff isn't useful for us and then of course uh five points to perfection perfection is really strong for this build as it gives us a lot of dodge and increased damage in armor so obviously you want it and then of course one point into exuberance so that when you're at full health you gain two stacks of perfection per hit which is very strong uh, one point travel into critical eye and then five points into all in we're almost always going to be critting so the 75 percent crit multi is very strong with the last like eight points you'll probably want to put them into death store to reduce the amount of one shots you take you're still going to take them but you're going to take them a lot less thanks to this node but you're still going to take them but uh death store is a very strong node um and that's pretty much it for the passives uh yeah death store and that's pretty much it it's pretty quick uh so let's talk about the gearing here it's a little bit more interesting here uh so for our idols uh the main thing we want is increased crit chance with flurry so that we don't have to spend so much crit chance if we actually get four of these idols right we actually do not need to run critical precision uh so that we can actually save some points there so that's a little bit of a knowledge nugget uh we also have crit chance per sword this works as well uh, and especially works with shadow cascade as well uh, crit multi while you're wielding you could like move this for like crit chance or whatever this doesn't really matter you can get rid of this one but yeah crit chance with flurry is very strong as it allows us to uh, pretty much uh, crit with flurry 100% of the time so we benefit from the health on crit so that we are very tanky now, uh, more important mods here, health on glancing blow, since we're going glancing blow is very strong, get more health on glancing blow here as well, increased damage while wielding the swords, pretty good, uh, other special mods, you kind of want melee attack speed and melee flat, uh, physical, because we're only going physical, because we're benefiting from a lot of physical, thanks to uh, the way Shadow Cascade works and stuff, and we're also getting a lot of phys base physical from the tree, and from Blade Dancer itself, so that gives us a lot of damage uh in overall so obviously you want as much fizz and melee attack speed and then health gained on hit is the best uh secondary thing as it will give us even more sustain because why the hell not uh after that everything is just dodge percentage uh res uh set ellie like dex stacking dex is very important as you want as much dex as possible because like i said you get a lot of benefit from dex you'll get flat dodge which allows us to dodge obviously gives us all over flat dodge gives us four percent increased damage per uh, dodge for our shadow cascade and our flurry also reduces the amount of mana that shift co cost doesn't really matter right now as i change the build from the channel version and then of course uh, uh obviously you'd want something like this maybe like with uh, increased crit chance with flurry uh not really uh not really difficult of a build to you know make and that's good because it's good for new players that's the idea right uh that's pretty much it for the gearing this time guys uh hopefully you guys enjoyed uh like comment subscribe if you guys enjoyed this and you're a new player uh that being said thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you're at and bye